evening church um let us uh, look to the lord in prayer before that we will just uh, look at the uh, passage for today yeah it's taken from first peter chapter 1 verses 8 and 9 as uh, let us all read together we'll be reading from the berean standard bible first peter 1 verse 8 to 9 let's read together though you have not seen him you love him and though you do not see him now you believe in him and rejoice with an expressible and glorious joy now that you are receiving the goal of your faith the salvation of your souls amen let us pray heavenly father we thank you for this uh, wonderful word that you have given us this evening lord as we spend some time meditating on your word we pray lord that you will give us open hearts and lord ears to listen to your word lord i pray lord if anybody has come here with difficulty in their hearts lord when they hear the word lord the faith will be built up lord we pray lord the that inexpressible joy that you have given us through your son jesus christ that we'll be able to experience that and we'll be able to live in that joy we thank you lord for your word we pray lord as the holy spirit leads us help us to understand what your love what your joy is lord thank you lord for hearing our prayers in the name of jesus amen amen well we are in the christmas season amen it is a wonderful time it is a time of festivities and a lot of times it can happen that we can get so much engaged in the festivities that we can forget what is the purpose of that right why are we here and so we are in the second advent which is uh, the advent of advent of joy if it was not clear from all the songs uh, you know so we are in so we, uh, i mean if you have a certain misunderstanding i want to clear it it is not that we are celebrating joy just this week we can live in that joy our entire lives amen that is what we just read and how many of you have been blessed with first peter we have done first peter here right first peter and second peter right man we have all been blessed so i just want to uh, take us back and just to do a review of a uh, few verses and look at what this passage has to tell us the title of the sermon is inexpressible and glorious joy i have taken the, it is not a fancy uh, title i have taken it right from the verse 8 which says that you now believe in him and rejoice with an inexpressible and glorious joy when you think of joy that picture comes into our mind right we don't know how to express our joy right that's what peter is telling to the churches that's what peter is telling back in the day uh, that we all have a joy which is inexpressible what is this inexpressible joy by the way what does it mean to have something which is inexpressible right something that cannot be expressed in words right there are times in our lives when we go through difficult uh, difficulty in our lives right we have sorrows we go through difficult times struggling times and there are times that we don't know how to express our grief right but praise god even in those moments god speaks to us and he shares our sorrow right and the same way he has given us a joy that cannot be expressed in mere words now i'll give you an example uh, there are times that uh, we have certain moments of happiness i would say where uh, you know we we don't know how to react we don't know how to express that um there are some events in our lives like for example uh maybe the birth of your first child right when you first held your baby in your arms and uh, it is such a joyous occasion that you don't know how to express it so tears of joy comes right we don't know it's it's supposed to be very joyous moment but tears come because your brain is confused the brain does not know how to handle such such an event you know it's such a beautiful time that i don't know my my body does not react according to the situation and so we do all these things you know we don't know how to express and the thing is why does peter say about this inexpressible joy here and what does it mean to have glorious joy see uh, brother vinod he spoke about you know in the beginning by the way thank you for uh, summing up the entire sermon in one line uh, when he said that um, you know uh, our happiness sometimes comes from circumstances around us right we look for these momentary nuggets of happiness and we work very hard we do a lot of things just to get a small dose of happiness every now and then 
right? But joy comes from the eternal source, right? So it cannot be contained, right? And that's why Peter talks about the inexpressible joy, something that you cannot express. Uh, it can only be lived, right? Um, I'm not sure, but if you have noticed some people uh, who are always very, you know, energetic, always uh, very joyful. And uh, I always used to wonder, you know, what, what motivates them? No matter what you say, no matter, uh, you know, whatever the circumstance, that person is always happy. What is the source? Uh, turned out that that person was a believer, right? Um, a believer has a joy that cannot be contained in our lives. It can only be lived, right? It was such a beautiful day today to see the worship team uh, not only singing, but you can see the joy on their faces, right? And that's what happens when we come into the house of the Lord. Because in the house of the Lord is what? Is joy. Joy cannot be contained, right? So we are going to look at what this joy is. And uh, um, if you are in a place, if you are uh, in a place in your life where you think, uh, well, I've tried everything. I've tried so many things. I have been, uh, you know, reading books on how to be happy and uh, I've tried everything. I've tried to lose weight. I've tried to do this, tried to do that, you know, tried to work hard in my life, tried to earn money, but uh, life is not going anywhere and I'm still not happy. Well, that's because you're looking for the wrong thing, right? And you're looking at the wrong place, right? Um, I'm not sure if you, uh, if you have played this game, but back in our childhood, we used to play this game. Um, unfortunately, these days, Kids are playing all everything, you know, online, digital games. But back in our day, we used to play physical games, right? So that you could play in the moment, not online. So one of the games that we used to play was um, hot and cold. Anybody remembers that game? Okay, I'll explain. So a bunch of us would be there and the one person, he'll say, he'll hide an item, right? He'll hide something and the rest of us had to uh, look for it. Whoever gets the item first wins. Very simple game, right? So four or five of us, we are trying to find the item. We don't know where it is. And so let's say someone hid um, some item here and I am close to this place. So the person who <laughs> hid the item would say, you're hot, you're hot, right? And if I go away from that, he'll say you're cold, right? So people would hear that, okay, what is hot? What is hot? Let me find it, right? Uh, turns out our, our pursuit of happiness is like that. We are looking in wrong places. And God is telling you are cold. You are away from me. You are away from the source. So definitely you cannot find that happiness. The happiness that you, you think you are looking for. We are looking for happiness in, in, in our jobs. In our workplaces. In our life. In our career. In our relationships. And all of that. Uh, but we are cold. Right? Because we are, we are away from the source. We are looking for happiness in circumstances, right? So I want to go and, you know, uh, before we go into the text, let's, let's see what this joy is. By the way, the Bible, mostly if you're using a standard version, uh, you'll, see, you'll not see the word happy much. You'll see the word blessed. You'll see the word grace. You'll see the word um, joy more because um, all these things being blessed or having faith or having love all this comes from God himself and so he is the source of it all so when he speaks about it in the word it does not talk about temporary things see our God is an eternal being right he is beyond time right so his attributes are eternal right so his joy is eternal right so we cannot contain an eternal joy but that is why he speaks about such a glorious joy. Now, we'll look into the word, how can we have that joy? How many of you want that joy today? Amen, amen. All right, let's look, what, what is this joy? Uh, so I was just looking for, you know, Greek words, what does it really mean? Uh, what, you know, in the earliest language when the Bible was written, when the New Testament was written, how was joy described? And so I was looking at a few verses and turned out the Greek word for joy is kara. Right? Uh, now, another similar word is uh, grace. Right? We always speak about uh, grace. Um, the Greek word for grace is charis. You see any similarity? So, grace and joy are directly correlated. If you have experienced the grace of God, 
that in itself is the joy of the Lord. Right? When we experience the grace of God, we know what it means. Right? That we, we were lost in the world and God has come and he has saved me. And so with that grace, I also experience that joy. Right? No grace means no joy. See, the, the reason why we have joy in our lives is because we have been saved by grace. Right? And that's why we're not, we don't have to look for happiness in small, small areas of our lives. Right? Let's look at what is, uh, what is the difference between um, happiness versus joy. You know, what is, um, these days, um, there is a job called online influencers. Right? Uh, Ten years ago, that kind of job did not exist. Right? There are jobs nowadays, people call themselves life coach. Uh, what is a life coach or who is a life coach? Someone who will help you to become a better version of yourself. Right? How to be happy at work, how to do this thing right, that thing right, and all of these things. And they'll give you all these self-motivational books and talks and, you know, they'll try to help you on how to find happiness in life. Um, but uh, as believers, uh, we have our life coach here. Right? When we read the word of God, we understand eternal truths. We not only understand the truths of this life, we also beyond this life. And so our life in itself uh, becomes a source of joy for others. Right? So what is the difference between happiness versus joy? Number one, happiness is momentary. Right? Um, few weeks ago, uh, I don't know how many of you are fans of cricket here, but I am a big fan of the sport. And also being an Indian, that's like in our blood, right? When we are born, the first thing that they teach us is to love cricket, right? And uh, our loyalty, our patriotism, everything comes on the day when India is playing cricket, right? Um, so recently, we had the Cricket World Cup, right? It happens in every four years. For those of you who do not know the game, let me tell you, it is a big deal, okay? Billions of people just in India watch that game, right? Recently, India came into the World Cup Finals. They won every single match. They didn't lose a single match. They came all the way to the finals, only to lose the finals. <laughs> so you know what was happening was, while the game was on, a billion people had their, had their fingers on the switch. You know what switch? Am I gonna be happy or sad today? It depends on the result, right? India lost, a billion people got sad, including me, right? I mean, it is, it is a moment of sadness, right? If India had won, I was thinking, okay, if India had won, what would have happened? Uh, the players would get, get a million, uh, you know, bucks, they would be happy, they would get a trophy, yes, it would be a national pride for Indians, um, all of that, but um, that happiness would, Vanish the next day for me. Momentary happiness. We look for momentary happiness in small, small areas. Like nuggets of happiness. And that is why we are looking for things in the wrong places. By the way, if you want to test it out, please do this. Okay? Take away the mobile phone from your teenage child for a day. And see how expressible is their anger. Right? Because... What happens is, we are living in an age today, a generation where we are addicted to so many things of the world that are, we are looking for nuggets of happiness in those moments, right? When you, when you win an online game or when you, when you speak to your friends online, when, you, when somebody likes your post on Instagram, those give you a hit of dopamine, right? That releases chemicals in your, in your brain that makes you happy for some time. And the same person, if you see a bad comment from someone, all that happiness can turn into sadness. We have a generation of youths living in most anxious state. There is depression and anxiety. That we have an, we have an actual pandemic in the world of, of depression and anxiety. These days you ask any, any child, any youth, uh, they would tell you, I'm going through this and that. Why? Because the world is bombarding them with small, small things which, which promises happiness, but it's hollow. There's nothing there, right? Joy, on the other hand, is eternal. Joy, on the other hand, is eternal. It is beyond time. Now, how do I know that? Because our God is a triune God. 
even before creating the world father son and the holy spirit they lived in a very joyful relationship that joy is not something that got produced after he created humans that joy was already there remember eden garden that story of adam and eve right before sin arrived it was a wonderful time right god had told adam uh, work the fields work the earth be joyful be fruitful multiply he had given a responsibility and a privilege of working these days when we get up in the morning to work how does it feel doesn't feel so joyful right waking up uh, putting an alarm and then putting the alarm off right snoozing it 10 times before you actually wake up and then take a shower and then go to work and on the work uh, you know um, curse the people around you when they are driving badly and somehow reach to work right and have a very bad day come back in the evening and then you are so tired and angry that you don't even want to speak to your spouse or your children where is the joy the thing is we are looking for happiness in the world which is temporary and which is devoid of god see god is the source of joy and if you take god out of the equation all you're left with is the deception of happiness the enemy wants to show you you know uh, like how he showed eve this is a nice fruit oh god really did he say that you know puts deception more the problem of this world right now is not um, uh, it's not information we all know the truth but we are deceived by the likeness of this world by what we see in the world and we put things more than god you know we put things materialistic things over god and that's why we cannot find happiness if if money could buy all the happiness in the world all these celebrities would not be anxious and depressed and committing suicide and all of this why are rich people still working don't they have enough it's not about you know people are still trying to find and fill a void in their hearts because we have a god sized void in our heart and that can only be filled with the joy of the lord amen happiness depends upon circumstances brother we not said that right happiness depends upon circumstances uh only if i get that promotion only if i get the job i'll be happy right we keep telling ourselves this lie and then once you get that promotion once you get that what's next momentary happiness joy doesn't depend upon circumstances right how do i know this because that's what i see in the word of god from cover to cover this joy was the same joy that was inside of daniel while he was in the lion's den this joy was uh, was the same joy in the heart of paul the apostle when he was writing with chains in his hands inside a solitary prison and he's telling the church what rejoice in the lord again i say rejoice how could a man who is been tried persecuted and being in jail and and his freedom is taken away he is able to tell others to rejoice how is that possible because he is trying to tell uh, tell us something that is beyond this world he is telling us a truth that does not belong in this world it's a truth from beyond right that our joy does not depends on our circumstances because circumstances can change any second uh, the other day i was watching a very <laughs> very funny video uh, i don't know what kind of parents do this but please don't uh, quote me on this and don't try this at home it can be very dangerous so i saw a prank video the parents are pranking their own children okay that too on christmas right so in the west christmas is a big thing right i mean they uh, they have gifts and christmas tree and all of that right um so i see these two children parents have kept huge gifts below the christmas tree and they are videotaping uh, the reaction of the boys while they'll unpack the gifts right so these two boys they come and they say oh this is this is your christmas gift come on open it right so the elder one he goes he opens it and it's a playstation 4 now those of you don't know parents sorry to tell you you're old but your children they love this games right playstation iphone and all of this so he sees this packet this cardboard you know which says playstation he cannot contain it he is rolling on the floor he is jumping up and down he is and he is saying i love you dad i love you so much what a gift you know he's just gone crazy with with so much of happiness right and uh, then he says okay why don't you open it and when he opens it it's empty 
that's the prank of the century you know what happened that moment in that moment all the happiness that he had turned into anger why because it was not what he expected it was parents pulling a prank on their own children please don't try this at home it can be really really dangerous right try this i mean if you take away the phone from your child one day and see what happens sorry kids i'm not giving your parents an idea because we are so dependent right we want to because that's our source of happiness every single day right and millions of kids are addicted to things that are on the internet on the phone and they are trying to find their identity in small small things right in their likes and how many people viewed their profile and all of that right um so joy does not depend on circumstance it doesn't matter whether you're going through a difficult time or a good time your joy stays right it leads you people can see that they'll ask you what is it in you that i don't have it i'm trying to find happiness in all of those things but you have something uh, that you're happy every time what is that by the way the word happy um earlier when this term was invented when it was coined uh, it actually meant uh, someone who had luck we don't see that word in the in the bible jesus never said you are lucky if you are a poor person he said blessed are those who mourn right he called them blessed he never said luck he never said about good fortune right um and so what happens is when we are when we depend on luck and these things um uh, we are just you know looking for small hints of happiness in our lives right we want to we all want to be millionaires in a in a lucky draw right that doesn't work right that doesn't work because god has already given us the lottery the biggest lottery right our salvation of our souls amen happiness has to be earned through lots of efforts right we we do this we do this right uh we teach our children to go to school and uh, what do we teach them we tell them you go to school get good grades uh then you go to college then you study more and then you get even more better grades right then you get a great job and then you earn a lot of money and then you what then you know you can be happy right the pursuit of happiness but the biblical pursuit of blessings pursuit of joy is completely different because it is not earned whenever we try to earn you know something it takes a lot of efforts and unfortunately we are living in a fallen world where sin is prevalent where our, our own hearts are deceivers our heart is, our heart itself is is deceiving us we don't know what we want we are trying to find our identity we are trying to find our understanding of joy right and so what what we do is we try to work hard and try to do a lot of things i have met a lot of people who say that i am trying my best i am trying to read my bible i am trying to pray sometimes uh, you know still i cannot be happy i am not able to find the joy uh, don't try trying and earning your just like we cannot earn our salvation we cannot earn joy it is given it is given joy is not earned it's received it is given right this evening if you are sitting here and if you are thinking you know i have tried everything and nothing seems to be working out let me tell you go to the source of the joy he has already given that he has already given you and me that joy of salvation happiness as i said can turn into sadness into us in a second in a second there are times that we uh, are happy and sad at the same time and we are trying to find that balance right oh i got a promotion but my salary is not enough right so i'm happy with my promotion but i'm still you know not really happy in fact i'm angry at my boss right there are times when we we try to be you know happy with some efforts we cannot be there's no point in that joy on the other hand is just overflows by the way i did not put up another point here which is um, happiness breeds jealousy but joy is contagious right when when you are uh, you know if you really want to truly find out who are your friends go and tell them uh, your best news and see how they react you'll know who's really happy for you who's really sharing your joy or who are really jealous right when you find momentary happiness others it is possible that others might get jealous of you but joy on the other hand is 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 something that is coming from god so you will just you know it it will just overflow from your heart 
it will not depend on what you're going through, what is happening in your life. You will, because your source is God, you're dependent on him. Amen. I just pray that, you know, this evening that we, we come to an understanding that uh, our joy comes from the Lord. Right? Our God is not a God who likes to be, uh, uh, you know, who makes pe people sad. He himself is a joyful God. He likes communion. He likes to have a good relationship with his people. Right? And when we do that, we can, you know, live in that, in that joyous relationship. Amen. So let's go back into our text. Let's read once again. It says, 1 Peter 1 verse 8 to 9. It says, though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an inexpressible uh, and glorious joy. Now that you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So if you notice, there are three things that, that Peter talks about here. And by the way, Peter is not writing to a bunch of Christians who are extremely happy. Uh, in fact, he was writing to people who were dispersed and who were in hiding because they were termed as the rebels. Because Christianity back then was not a legit religion. And they were being persecuted for having the faith in Jesus Christ. And so they were scattered all over Asia Minor. And so Peter is writing to them. And, and, and the whole letter that he writes is about hope and faith in Christ Jesus. And to never lose that joy. Right? So Peter when he is writing to the church. He is writing to them. Even when they are going through very difficult circumstances. And that's where he says that you can still find that joy. You can still experience and live in that joy. And why does he say that? He speaks about three things. One is uh, that you do not see him, but you believe in him. And he also speaks about that you love him. Right? And finally, he also talks about the purpose of this joy. The reason of that joy, which is the salvation of our souls. Right? Uh, so, so let's look at what are, what are the reasons that he, he talks about here. One is loving relationship with God. Um, I want to ask you this evening, do you have a relationship with God? If you don't, then how will you have that joy? In order to have joy, relationship is very important with God. Because he is the source of all joy. Right? Number two, he speaks about faith in God. Even though you don't see him, you still have faith in him. Right? He, and faith is an important, important aspect in our life. If you want to live a joyful life without having faith... Um, you know, the Bible speaks very clearly. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Right? And then he finally, he also talks about why we have this joy. The reason. Because I have been saved. Right? How many have, of you have experienced that joy of being saved? Right? When we experience that salvation, when we experience that born again, you know, that feeling when you, when you understand the, the depth of your sins and what really Jesus has done for you. That is an incredible revelation in our lives. You know when, when we come to God. And when our eyes are opened. And when we realize. Wow I am such a huge sinner. Yet Jesus loved me. He came down for me. Right. We always say this. Jesus came down to the, from the heaven to the earth. To die for our sins. But when I say that he died for my sins. It makes it personal to me. See, our God is a personal God, right? Uh, by the way, Jesus is not the God who only speaks to the pastors here. He speaks to everyone, right? He speaks to everyone and we have the written word of God, right? And he loves to be in a relationship, amen? So let, let's look at what is loving relationship with God. Let's, I want to read from John chapter 3 verse 29. This is from uh, John chapter 3 verse 29. Here, um, I have selected few passages, just few key passages to just go, you know, in these three points. So in this passage, John the Baptist, the, this is the context, okay? John the Baptist, uh, you know, the cousin of Jesus who came before Jesus to uh, prepare the way for the Lord. Um, his ministry is about to come to an end. He has already baptized Jesus and then Jesus and his disciples have started to baptize others now, right? On the other side of the river. And so John's disciples... They come and say to him, you know what, the guy that you said that he's the Messiah, he has started his own ministry now. He is baptizing people there. Probably they might have thought that, you know, John would get mad. You know, but this is his response. This is what he says at that time. He says, the bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom stands and listens for him and is overjoyed to hear the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and it is now complete. So he speaks about two things. Number one, he talks about his relationship with Jesus. 
he talks about he being the best man at the wedding the best friend of the bridegroom right and he also says that i am able to hear his voice you know many a times we don't uh, have any joy in our life because we cannot hear the voice of god and you know sometimes we think oh hearing the voice of god is only for the pastors and the elders and all these spiritual people no it's for you and me we can hear the voice of god uh, if you really want to you know someone said it this uh, uh, someone said this uh, if you want to hear the voice of god read your bible and if you want to hear the voice of god audibly read the bible aloud <laughs> by the way the word of god really speaks i have i personally have testimonies over testimonies about this even during the most dark days you read the bible and god clearly speaks he divides the truth he goes through the bone and marrow he pierces your heart that's the joy of listening to god's voice now um interesting thing is um i don't know how many of you know this um, i mean most of us would know um that we grew up in the time of landline phones right gen z generation i know for sure this might be a new term for you but let me explain how the landline used to work so landline was this huge device that you would put in your home right and someone would call you and you wouldn't know who it is you actually had to pick up the phone and say hello and try to figure out who is on the other end no caller id imagine how the missed calls worked back then i don't know someone called i don't know <laughs> right so back in the day before caller id and all that what would happen is um you would get a call you would just pick up speak to that person get to know who is that right now imagine back in the day if my wife would call and i would pick up that phone and i would say hello who is this you know that day i'm not getting dinner at home right <laughs> imagine me telling my wife who is this i don't recognize your voice i'm sure some of you who are laughing i think it has happened to you <laughs> right so uh, when you hear the person whom you know you can know their voice try this out take your child in a crowded place and go at a distance and speak the name of the child your child will understand will listen to your voice and will come to you jesus said this my sheep knows my voice right uh, if you are an early like you know uh, if you have a child who's uh, who's small you can know that you know if you have a newborn you know this even the child understands the warmth and the sound of the mother right even the child understands over time and can recognize the voice of the mother how is that possible and so when we say that i don't hear god's voice that's because you're not talking to him enough talk to him spend time with him you will get to know his voice you know in the most difficult times when so many voices you can hear people's voices all pe- others opinions uh, a lot of you know clutter is out there and in the middle of that there will be the voice of the holy spirit and if you commune with him you will understand his voice amen so this is what he talks about having a relationship with jesus let's let's also read from john 15 10 verse 11 10 and 11 here jesus is talking to his disciples what does he say He says if you keep my commandments you will remain in me in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete See uh you know sometimes we read this and this we think oh Jesus just wants me to you know just follow his commandments There is great joy in following god's commandments and being obedient to him and this is not a burden this is a privilege you know jesus has loved us so much that he died for us he has give, he has paid a huge price for that and it is worth it you know to follow him to keep his commandments right um, i'll give you an example right we uh, you know if you have teenage children you know this how difficult it is for them to you know follow your commandments right um imagine one day when they come to the house they are studying on their own right they are doing house chores they come into the kitchen and say mom how can i help you and suddenly you feel something is wrong what does he want right because that is not the style 
of a teenager. Teenagers are usually rebellious and get angry at everything, right? And they are always embarrassed with their parents and so many things happening, right? But imagine the love that you will feel if you see that, that, that when your child is following you, your commandments and you're and obedient to you, there is a certain joy that comes, right? When you live in harmony, when you live in obedience to God, there is a joy that overflows. And by the way, why wouldn't we be obedient? This, we are talking about the God of righteousness, a God who loves us so much that he gave his life for us so that we can have a life of abundance. Sometimes we think that, we think, you know, Christianity is a difficult, uh, difficult way of life. I'll have to give up my pleasures. I have to, uh, you know, this I constantly hear, especially from youths. Whenever we talk about baptism, this is the one thing they say. Um, baptism, I don't want because, you know, then I have to be perfect. Baptism is, 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 an, is an act of obedience. When you love God, take that obedience. What is stopping you? If something is stopping you, that means you have commitment issue. It's not about being perfect. We can never be perfect until the second coming of Jesus Christ. Unless we, unless we get glorified into his body. Right? But following him is a choice. Living a joyful life is a choice. Which, pre, you know, which button are you pressing? Right? And when you live a life of, of you know, obeying God there's a kind of happiness in that joy that comes in which is not of this world that is above and beyond amen this is my prayer this evening that we become believers not only who come to church for an hour of happiness you know not only to get some nuggets of how to better my life but to live in in, in God's obedience that we can experience that joy every single day amen then, we all, then Peter also speaks about faith in God. What is having faith in God? Let's read from John chapter 16, verse 24. In this verse also, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. What does he say? He says, until now you have not asked me for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive. So that your joy may be complete. Right? Jesus is giving you this invitation. Right? He says that, ask in my name and see what happens. Right? Right? Uh, the problem is, we live in times where we have abundance of everything. Abundance of everything. Resources, money, uh, you know, we hear this always, right? 50% of the world's population is starving and the other 50% is trying to lose the weight. Right? Because we live in times and eras where the problems are of uh, abundance, not of shortage. Diabetes, all the, you know, all the illnesses that we can think of, it is coming from not because of shortage, but because of the abundance. And so what happens is because of this abundance of materialism, materialistic things, what has happened is our dependence is on, is on our money, is on our bank accounts, on our jobs. And that's why we keep on building plans over plans. Oh, what do I do this? You know, what, what, what is my plan for next five years? You know, if you go for an interview, one of the questions that these HR people, they ask is what? Where do you see yourself in five years? I don't know, maybe Jesus Christ will come, I want to go with him. That would be the honest truth, right? But still we make up some story, oh, I want to be a managerial level, I like to see myself at a leadership position. For what? For what? Our dependence is not on the worldly things, but on God. Have you lived a life where you prayed something and you got it? Do you know the joy of that? Oh, it's so amazing. It is so amazing when you depend on God. You just have a desire and you just pray. You don't tell anyone. And then God supernaturally brings that to happen. I have experienced that multiple times. And I'm sure you have to. Dependence on God is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And that dependence can only come when you have the faith in Jesus Christ. If he can save your souls from eternal damnation, I think he can provide for small needs also. Amen. Finally, he spoke, he spoke about why are we joyful. We are not joyful because we got a promotion and you know, we have uh, money in the bank and all of that. But we are joyful because he has given us salvation. Right? Luke 15. You know, Luke 15, one of the one of the best chapters you know if you uh, if you're feeling lost in the world read John chap uh, Luke chapter 15 there are three parables Jesus talks about the parable parable of the lost sheep the parable of the lost 
coin and the par- parable of the lost son right whom we also call as a prodigal son but in these three we see a common theme what is the common theme something was lost and then god found it and you see the reaction right this is what we see in luke chapter 15 verse 7 it says in the same way i tell you that there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous ones who do not need to repent do you know that even god is joyful when we turn from the world and turn to god you know heaven is rejoicing over your and my choices are we giving god a a, a reason to have joy does he look down on uh, us on us and is heaven rejoicing that's a question that we need to ask ourselves right jesus god himself is joyful over one person who turns from the world and repents and comes to him and that is an opportunity that's an invitation that he has given remember the story of the prodigal son the the lost son he was lost and when he came back to his father what was his reaction what was his reaction if he was an indian father he would say hmm welcome back now you have come huh? did you get some brains first question he would have asked but the god that uh, the father that he is represented there is god uh, you know the heart of the father he says come on in you know what i'm going to throw a party for you because you have come back to me my house my love has always been open and praise god you have come back let's have a party let's you know let's celebrate that is the heart of the father for you and me why wouldn't we put our faith in this god today this evening if you are thinking uh, if you feel lost let me tell you heaven rejoices when you come back to him so if you don't know this this god this christ who is the author the source of all joy you know that joy that will not go when you when you lose a job when you lose money when you have a death in the family no matter what circumstance you go through yes we grieve yes uh, we mourn for our losses but there is still an underlying underlining joy even in our hearts even do, during those times because we are built on that solid rock of the foundation that is Christ Jesus amen uh this christmas season i want to ask you this have you received this joy sometimes we get so much engrossed in just celebrating the festival um and the celebrating christmas tree and do, you know doing all of this activities that we forget the purpose see uh, the 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 magi the the wise kings the shepherds and all of those people when they went when the angel appeared to them and said you know the savior has been born they went and they had joy why because they understood this truth that the savior has been born there someone has come god of gods king of kings and the lord of lords he has come down from heaven to save you and me that is an unprecedented joy a joy that cannot be expressed through through words so no matter what you're going through i don't know your situation and and you know i'm not trivializing your 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 issues we all go through difficult issues um, whether it is work relational financial all of those life is hard by the way if you have not not, not noticed life is very hard but look at the god that this god he became part of our suffering you know he did not he was not a distant god he left heaven so that you and me can be saved that is the god we serve amen um second question i want to ask you is do you have a loving relationship with god uh, and i'm not talking about reading your bible once a week or once a month uh, you know Jan- come january 1 we will have all we will all have our reading plans ready right and january 2 we all abandon that right um having a loving relationship with god is very easy uh, stick to the basics pray every day read your bible and have communion with your uh, with with the church with uh, you know with with fellowship with with believers and that is why you know in the coming season we have the elders taking up some basic stuff um discipleship program i would request if you can if you are able to if you if you are able to make time on fridays please come join that i have registered for it so you know it it will be you know even if you know even if you are very well versed about salvation baptism it will be good training for retraining for us so that we can teach someone else right so i want to encourage you um if you do not have a uh, loving relationship with jesus christ today please come 
speak to us. You know, we would love to, uh, you know, share that joy with you. Amen. And finally, um, get to know, get to know the source of this inexpressible and glorious joy. Amen. Can I call the, call the music team as we, as we will go and spend some time in prayer. This is my prayer this evening that, uh, um, you know, God has already given us this joy. Don't run away from it. Receive it. Right? Receive this joy of the salvation. Amen. Let's all stand as we, as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word this evening. Um, Lord, thank you, Lord, that you left heavens um, because you, you, you saw us, Lord, before the creation of the world. And thank you, Lord, that you are a God who gives us joy, a joy that this world cannot give, nor can it take back, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you are a God who wants his children to be not just happy, Lord, but really be blessed and joyful. And Father God, we pray, Lord, this evening, Lord, that if there's anyone here who's struggling in their lives, Lord, and who's struggling in their faith, that, Lord, that you would build faith in their lives, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that um, you will continue to help us to live a joyful life, Lord. Lord, that when we go out there in the world, uh, this joy will be contagious. And this Christmas season, Lord, help us to show this joy to others and help us to share this joy with others, Lord. We thank you for the meditation of your word. We thank you, Lord, for this time in the name of Jesus.